Toradora is the heartwarming story about a Japanese boy who has slanty eyes, as opposed to everyone else in his society. This boy lives alone with his mother, who, whose job consists of giving alcohol half-naked to old men, and whose father is dead, and seems to be some sort of gangster. You know, he seeks to live up to his father's image by being a woman and cleaning up everything in a plot point that's dropped rather early on, since, you know, his compulsive cleaning never comes up because you don't really see him in his home past episode four. They're too busy in school shenanigans. Now, because he has slanted eyes unlike everyone else in Japan, he is unfortunately hated and reviled by his classmates and the people around him for being scary looking, and he terrifies them. So they all hate and avoid him, until about a girl who's a third of his size knocks him out in one punch. Now, I don't really know, I don't remember where she hit him, because her arms definitely couldn't reach above his waist, and a single punch wouldn't have knocked him flat in his face, but that's what she did, and because of that, everyone realized he was actually a total dweeb and couldn't square up in a fight. So everyone became his friend, because they realized how, you know, how, how a decent guy he was, you know. No problems. Just a swell person. He then decides to go back to the classroom to pick up his bag they left. He sees the same girl who has snuck herself into the cabinet in the back of the room, leaves the cabinet, tries to attack him again. He flees the scene. He returns home. He has a good time, you know, realizing that inside his bag, there is actually a love letter this girl wrote. Although he doesn't find that out yet, because she comes into his house, she breaks in because she happens to live on the other side of his window, uh, with a, comes in with a wood sword and attempts to kill him for this letter, which it's rather, it's kind of unclear whether she was sleepwalking, but then why would she know that's where he lived? Or if she was completely in her right mind, she actually intended to kill him. doesn't really matter. She receives the letter back. You know, he's like, she, she explains that it wasn't meant for him. It was actually meant for some other character that, you know, also appeared in the episode. He was the only person who, who liked our protagonist because, you know, he knew that he was actually a good guy because he knew him from before. Before high school, that is. And uh, so... He attacks, but he doesn't actually attack. What happens then is she, through some contrived method, looks through photographs. Some, he has some. She looks through his belongings after she broke in and tried to kill him, realizes that he is also attracted to one of her friends, and that's it. And she realizes, ha-ha, now that I have the secret, let's, let's get the plot going, and we will help each other with our, you know, different affections, which he agrees with. Because, you know, well, she was a cute anime girl and he was right. He was all for it. No, the, the, the main girl isn't a cute anime girl, but her friend, she was, well, the friend was okay. But uh, that was that was episode one, I think. I think he also cooks her food and cleans her sink because it was covered in garbage because she doesn't clean for herself, I guess. She lives alone. She lives alone in an apartment across. It, it doesn't, you know, I, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense, but that's where she lives. I, mean, I guess it makes sense. She cooks for herself, but she just eats cup noodles. So he decides, he's like, hey, why don't you come over and eat uh, eat dinner with me and my mother, who, you know, just shows up whenever she shows up. And that's episode one. Episode two, uh, I, I don't really remember what happens. I'm just looking at an episode synopsis so I can just recall everything, and I, I'm not really figuring anything out. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, some other chick is also into the friend that, you know, I, I mean, I purposely wasn't going to use any names because I thought it'd be funnier, but it's going to get distracted. It's, well, basically, the friends with glasses is the one that the main girl is uh, attracted to, and so she realizes, oh, there are other girls who are off also after him, so she gets really upset about this. Um, and I think she tries to make him cookies, I guess, but he, the, the main pro character eats the cookies instead for some reason. Maybe they think they're all broken. They fell and they're all sh 
crumpled, and so he ate them. He's like, nah, these are all right, even though they're all crumpled. I don't really remember if she made them or if he helped her make them, but, you know, I mean, he's essentially eating his own cookies done. Uh, da da da. Uh, okay, well, then she confesses her love to Glass's guy, and he rejects her. And then I guess he's like, oh, protagonist doesn't really care. I mean, I guess he's sure he does care, but I don't remember how it reacts. He just says, oh, that's, you know, that's too bad. She's a strong person or whatever. Whatever. Don't care. Uh, then the other friend. Okay, whatever. This isn't getting anywhere. This show sucks. I hate this show. It's, it's not interesting. I hate Toradora, but I don't actually hate Toradora. I did, but not as much as I said I did at one point in time. There was a, when I first watched the show, I really, really disliked it, but I couldn't actually remember why, because there was so there was such a gap between when I began it and when I ended it. I couldn't recall anything. I saw that I hated it, so I'd often say I hated it, and then you know, I eventually decided, let me remember why I did, and I watched it again, and it, you know, it wasn't as funny, you know, to hate it, but I, I was still able to say, well, this wasn't very good. And it wasn't. I don't know. I, I hated most of the characters. I, hate, I definitely hate the main girl. She was annoying. She was dumb. Uh, her actions made no sense, but, you know, I guess that's the point. She's like, oh, she doesn't understand her feelings. She's irrational and angry. She has weird... I mean, the, the one time they went to her backstory with like her, with her father, those were actually okay. I, I liked that episode. I liked where they were going with that. The father was kind of an interesting character, but he, he just... How he sort of flakes out on her. Uh, but it, it's never, I think there's like a throwaway line in the last episode, like, oh, he, he, because he was extremely wealthy, that, that's how she's paying for her apartment she lives by herself in, he, he just pays for that, I guess, because, I mean, his whole thing is he, he's, he, I mean, he likes her, I guess, but for some reason he just can't commit to being around her for too long, I don't remember why. I don't think they ever give a reason, but he just isn't around her very often. He can't stand being around her, I guess, even though he would take her out to dinner every day. He's like, all right, hey, let's have some, you know, bonding time. And they'd, they'd go eat dinner. And then, you know, she was she was happy with it, but I guess that was just too much. I, I don't really know what the problem was, but she decides, you know, basically it's this really stupid drawn out thing. And just like, oh, here's conflict between the protagonist and that the one friend that he's interested in because she knows that her father's no good because he's done this before. Um, and, you know, and then when the, he can ask the main girl about that, she's like, yeah, I knew he would eventually flake out, but I wanted to believe this time. It's supposed to be sad and stuff, but you know, I don't really care. Uh, you know, he got a bad rap. I mean, he's only mentioned the very end where they realize like, Oh, actually he's gone bankrupt and fled the country or something like that. I don't know if he fled the country, but he ran away. So it's like, haha, I guess he got what he got what was coming to him, even though he provided for her for years, even though she was kind of, she was, she, I mean, she, by the way, it wasn't, there's a little bit of resistance to, you know, get her to agree to even meet with her father. She's like, oh, I hate that guy. He's worthless and stupid. Even though he's paying for my livelihood right now because she was too annoying. She just couldn't stand being around her mother because, uh, you know, her mother decided to, I, I, it doesn't really explain, her mother remarried, you know, implying it's possible. And I guess she's having a child with her, her new husband, and I guess our, our, our main girl just couldn't stand the thought of it, so she left. You know, understandable, understandable, but it doesn't make her any better. So, we go on to the next episode. I, I, yeah, this isn't by episode, I, I probably skipped her ahead a few miles. Anyways, the best character in the show is, so the Glasses friend has some other friend, I, I guess. Uh, who's a girl? She's some sort of, you know, fashion model. Um, and she, I mean, the whole, her whole, th her, her thing is that she's sort of very, you know, polite and respectable and mature, or whatever, but she's actually, you know, how do I put this delicately? Uh, you know, not very kind. I, I guess she's, she's sort of rude and petty. And I mean, I, I don't know why. I guess she just, I don't know, I don't know what really triggers her, her sort of, or like what causes her to, how she evaluates which personality to use, because when she's around the protagonist and her friend, she, she acts, you know, all nice and whatever, but when she's alone with, with uh, the main girl, she's like, oh, why don't you get me something to drink? You're a worthless slave. Something like, this doesn't really make sense. I don't know what, what, I don't know what she expected. Did she just expect that, you know, this, this girl that she doesn't know, 
you know, after being demeaned and mocked, would, would just say, like, okay, I guess I'm not going to say anything. Like, I think a reasonable reaction would to be kind of annoyed and upset, but these are Japanese people, so they don't, you know, they don't make sense. They're weirdos. Uh, I don't know. She's an interesting character, though. I, I kind of like her. She's definitely my favorite character in the show, but she pretty much past the halfway point. She doesn't do anything. She's just like, oh, another friend that the protagonist sometimes talks to, gives like stupid advice. I don't really remember. She's she's so uh, you know she her parole is gone by the end, but that you know, that's fine, I guess. She the less screen time she has, less chance they have to make things worse. The whole thing is that like, she's also in love with the protagonist. I mean, this is sort of I guess a harm set up, you know. But not really. I mean he just has to have, like three girls in love with him, you know. Basically. So the main girl, the the girl who's the friend of the main girl and this model friend. Um which, by the way, is, I mean, just skipping ahead to the last three episodes or whatever, this is honestly, the, that was the, one of the dumbest bits of the show. Uh, where, you know, whole, like, I mean, I, I was willing to accept that she, the main girl, liked the main guy. That was fine. But it, that was acceptable. But the protagonist never wavered in saying that he, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm all for your friend. You know, I'm still, he thought, he thought the original plan was still intact. He thought that was still going. He didn't realize that, you know, her, the target of her affection had shifted, but eventually he gets in, like, there's some big confrontation, right? They're, they, they all go to this this room, you know, like this classroom, and it, it's just, they, 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 they make them confront each other, where she tells him, I actually loved you all along, and she runs away. And then the, then this, the, the, the friend, she, she tells him, oh, by the way, you don't actually love me. You loved her this entire time. And, and he's okay. He's he's like, oh yeah, I guess you're right, haha. Ha. And he goes and chases after her. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I was honestly, you know, I was I was just bewildered. It made no sense. Just he just accepted it. It's like, well, I guess that's gonna happen. I mean, she had this really annoying subplot where she, you know, acts all sort of, you know, brooding and upset because, oh, you know, she actually likes him, but she's she's you know. She's not going to pursue this relationship because she knows how much her friend cares about him. So to be I didn't care. wasn't interested. Uh, then the whole thing was like some Christmas party, and that was kind of stupid. Uh, then they have like a... Well, oh, whatever. That sucks. Well, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of other stuff that happens I don't really remember or care about. <sighs> um... I don't know. He, he, the protagonist finds out that. Oh, cool. So okay, that's right. I forgot because I realized there's more. So he he goes to her and says like, "Oh, they realize. Oh, we're actually in love." And then the 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 mothers of both protagonists, I guess, met, met each other off screen. They confronted two of them as they're walking through the streets of wherever they live, some some city in Japan. And they say, "You, you know, you got to come back home. You guys are you, you're being unreasonable." And then. They say no, we we love each other. And then, so that they they run away to the protagonist's mother's parents' house, where he just sort of hangs out, I guess, with this, you know. And then, I, it's it's basically they do something stupid. They get like the mother to come back. He reconciles with his mother, and then they're all sort of happy there. And they, they're like, yeah, we're going to get married now, and everything's everything's going to be great. You find out the big twist that her his father isn't actually dead. He just left her because she was a poor judge of character. And, you know, it doesn't really have any impact on the, I, I guess, he, because he are. I mean, it would have made a little more sense. Okay, so because he always hated his father because his father, because he inherited his, like, you know, slanted eyes from his father. You know, because Japan, nobody else has them. Uh, he, he, so he inherited his eyes, so he always like, God, I hate my father, you know, he was the worst, how could he have done this to me, he ruined my life, or whatever. So he's always resentful of him, so I don't really understand, like, like what was the point, because his, his behavior didn't change, he, I didn't even think he said anything, like, oh, by the way, your father left me, he didn't, he didn't die, and he was okay. Maybe he was just like, oh yeah, that seems, that seems, that makes sense, that's within his character, I guess, from the stories he's heard. You know, he was, he was on board, he didn't really care, so, whatever, that, that's, that sucks. Uh, anyways, so this, this, the main girl actually sort of chickens out and then abandons him because I, I don't really remember. She goes and just lives with her mother for a while and then 